This is the all new KDE Plasma 6.4 and it's a massive update. This release is packed with major foundational changes, long awaited fixes that the community has been asking for years and some seriously powerful new productivity features that will completely change how you use KDE Plasma. We are talking about the newly introduced Session Restore protocol, mind-blowing custom tiling layouts for individual virtual desktops, this one's huge. And yes, they finally fixed that 18-year-old drag and drop request. I've been playing with KDE Plasma 6.4 for some time now and it's honestly one of the most polished and feature-rich releases I've seen in a long time. So let's jump right in and see what makes this update so special. Let's start this list off with the biggest update, the one that I absolutely loved. The Spectacle Screenshot tool has been completely redesigned here. In earlier versions, you'd launch Spectacle, choose a capture mode like rectangular region, window mode or full screen and then take the shot. And then it would open in a separate window for edits. It worked, but it was a few extra clicks. Now with the new way, you launch Spectacle and it immediately goes into rectangular selection mode. Just drag a box over what you want and you take a screenshot. This new workflow is so much better than the old way. You wouldn't think something as simple as taking screenshots on KD Plasma could be improved this much. But this new workflow is miles ahead because it gets you to your final screenshots quicker and in fewer clicks. The advantage is clear. It's incredibly fast and intuitive, removing unnecessary extra steps and streamlining the entire process. And as a bonus, the annotation tools are immediately available and are more powerful as well. As soon as the print screen button is pressed, the tools are right there ready to be used. There's no need to take the screenshot first and open it in a separate editor. For someone who takes a lot of screenshots, this is going to be incredibly powerful. You can also now hold the shift key while using the pen or highlighter to draw perfectly straight lines. I like what they've done here. They have removed all the additional steps and getting those annotated and final edited screenshots feels so much more efficient and streamlined now. But of course, you still get the flexibility and the choice of taking different kinds of screenshots. That's still available here. In addition, you can combine different keys with the print screen button to take full screen or window screenshots directly. For screen recordings, Spectacle now uses the more efficient VP9 encoding profile and this solves previous performance and stability issues some people had noticed on moderate hardware. Alright power users, this next one is for you, I mean for us. KDE Plasma 6.4 brings custom tiling per virtual desktop and this is an absolute game changer for productivity. I'm a huge tiling guy and I'm absolutely blown away by this. Now KD Plasma already had a very good tiling mechanism. You could press Meta plus T to enter the tiling mode, create custom layouts and it all worked great. I actually loved it. But it now goes on steroids. You can set up a completely unique tiling layout for each virtual desktop. How it works is brilliantly simple. The tiling layout you create on desktop 1 is now completely independent from the one on desktop 2. This is a massive improvement because it lets you create perfectly optimized environments for different tasks. For example, you could have the main layout for coding on one desktop, giving your main editor the most screen space and then switch to a completely different grid layout for monitoring system resources on another, where every window gets equal importance. Trust me, this is a phenomenal boost for productivity and organization. It's all built in, no extension needed. Now I have a very complex workflow in my work. I have multiple windows open and I have multiple workspaces and there's a lot of stuff going on in my computer at any given time. While the tiling that we already had has been getting the job done, this is going to really take it to the next level. I can pre-configure different workspaces for different tasks or subtasks. It's definitely going to give me a head start when I plug in for some focused work. This is a fantastic extension to a phenomenal tiling feature that Plasma already had. Top points. Next up, we got something that's really cool. The desktop aesthetic aficionados in you are going to really enjoy this. Plasma 6.4 introduces time of the day wallpapers. Now it's not like the light and dark themed wallpapers that we have in GNOME desktop. This is about having a desktop that lives and breathes with you, wakes up and sleeps with you. I think I'm making it sound too romantic, am I? Basically, your desktop will now automatically switch between light and dark versions of a wallpaper, sync perfectly to your local sunrise and sunset timings. Great, now you don't even have to look out the window. The wallpapers that support this feature are marked as dynamic in your wallpaper settings. 
You will also see a special two-sided preview that show you exactly what the desktop wallpaper will look during both daytime and nighttime hours. A bright and vibrant wallpaper during the day and a calm and darker version of the same thing during the night. It can definitely be good for your eye. Yeah, this is definitely immersive and dynamic. Now we get the option to either switch these based on the time of the day or the theme that is in the wallpaper settings itself. You can choose whichever you prefer. It's one of those small elegant touches that makes the entire desktop feel incredibly dynamic and you know, alive. It adds a whole new layer of polish to the Plasma experience. Plasma Desktop has always been a desktop customization heaven. The updated Plasma 6.4 reintroduces the Aurora theme engine for window decorations. I'm a huge fan of desktop aesthetics and I'm really excited for this. Now Aurora had already been present in Plasma 5 but it was soon deprecated. Now it's born again. As I said, Plasma's theming has always been top tier, best in class. You could already change almost anything you want. But with Aurora, things are getting a massive upgrade. This new engine uses tech like SVG and QML, which basically means that theme creators are being handed a whole new box of toys. This allows for windows decorations, the title bars, the buttons, the frames to be sharper, more dynamic and way more creative than before. We are talking advanced blurs, slick animations and different looks for active and inactive windows. For someone like me who loves to tweak every pixel of my desktop, this is a huge deal. Now it's not just about what we get today. You can't see this update in Plasma 6.4 visually, but it's going to unlock the creativity of the entire KDE theming community for years to come with a new way to create mind-blowing themes. Okay, this next one is for all of you who have been patiently waiting. And when I say patiently, I mean 18 years. That's right. Plasma 6.4 finally adds the option to make drag and drop move files by default on the same drive. I can almost hear the Linux world cheering in unison. In earlier versions of Plasma, if you drag a file to another folder on the same drive, you'd always get that little pop-up asking if you wanted to move here, copy here or link here. It was definitely flexible and safe, not denying that. But for those of us who are just constantly reorganizing files, it was an extra click every single time. Now you can just head into system settings, go to workspace behavior and under general behavior, you'll find that drag and drop section where you can change the default action. Drag a file and it moves, no questions asked. But if you prefer the old way, it's still there. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Alright, for all of you visual perfectionists and gamers, KDE is pushing to make HDR on Linux a truly great experience. You know, setting up HDR used to be a real headache of just fiddling with settings and guessing what looked right. Plasma 6.4 fixes that with the new HDR Calibration Wizard, a simple step-by-step -step tool that takes all the guesswork out of the process. And the best thing here, they also added extended dynamic range. Now this is a tech that cleverly simulates HDR effects on compatible displays that aren't technically HDR supported. This means more people can enjoy stunning high contrast visuals with the 6.4 update. And with the HDR Calibration Wizard, it's now easier than ever to get a properly calibrated picture on Linux. Okay, let's get a little technical for a moment because this next change is huge for the future of Plasma. For a long time, Kvin, the window manager, had to juggle code for both the old X11 display server and the modern VLAN. This had started to really slow things down as fixing or improving something for VLAN could sometimes cause issues on X11. Well, not anymore. They have now split the X11 specific code into its own separate package and the VLAN specific code into its own separate package. So the developers are now free to focus entirely on making the VLAN experience as fast, stable and feature rich as possible without being held back by the X11 legacy code. This is KD going all in on the future and it promises much faster innovation from here on out. Alright, we've seen the headline features but the part is not over. Now it's time for the rapid fire round where we uncover the hidden gems, those small but mighty quality of life updates that you'll end up using every single day. Let's go. The Discover Software Center gets a nice tune up with this release. Now you can fire off updates right from the notifications which is a great little time saver. Plus for all you Fedora Keonite users, 
they have squashed a bunch of bugs with the RPM OST backend, so managing your software on immutable distros is going to be way more stable and reliable. The UI has been touched up, so that still looking message now appears correctly centered. For all you designers and developers, KRunner now understands color codes. Just type in the hex code and BAM, you get an instant color preview. Plus, it's smarter about search, pushing key actions like shutdown and restart right to the top so you're not digging for them anymore. Plasma's file transfer notification got way more useful. Now when you click on details during a file move or copy, you'll see a real-time graph of your transfer speeds. It's clean, it's visual and it's kinda satisfying. By the way, the system will also now prevent itself from going to sleep automatically when a file transfer is in progress. This is a great practical improvement. That's right, you can now see GPU usage on a per process basis right in the system monitor. You might need to make it visible though. If you're wondering which app is making your graphics card work over time, now you'll know. The app menu editor, K menu edit just got a major facelift to make it look and feel more modern. It had gotten kinda stagnated I guess. So they'll touch up the UI look and feel. But the best part is a super handy feature for laptop gamers. You can now easily tell specific apps to always run on your powerful discrete GPU. It's a powerful tweak for a big performance boost. This is a fantastic one for all the laptop users out there. You can now use a 3 finger pinch out gesture on your touchpad to smoothly zoom into the entire screen like you're zooming into an image on your phone. It's super intuitive and makes the desktop feel incredibly modern, not to mention it's a huge accessibility advantage. You know when you install a new application and then it vanishes into your app menu and you can't remember its name because well, it's a new app for you? Well, kick off. The application menu here in Plasma 6.4 now puts a handy little new badge on newly installed apps. So they are super easy to spot right away. There you go. Problem solved. Here's a little win for sanity. You can now force hide tray icons even those stubborn ones that don't offer a built-in option to disappear. No more clutter here. If you want it gone, it's gone. For all you power users and gamers who love to keep an eye on your hardware, there's a new sensors page in the info center. This gives you an awesome centralized dashboard to monitor things like your CPU and GPU temperatures, fan speeds and even power consumption. How cool is this? It's the perfect tool to make sure your system is running cool and efficiently during those intense gaming sessions. It's still in development though as I had to tinker a bit to get it working. Plasma 6.4 is bringing initial support for one of the very powerful and foundational improvements, proper session restore on Wayland. Now remember that this is an initial tryout. A realistic, fully functional session restore protocol is technically a huge undertaking. It's just not easy to get working. But the work is beginning here. So what exactly is this? You know how frustrating it is when you reboot your computer and all your perfectly arranged windows are just gone? Well, Plasma 6.4 is laying the groundwork to fix that for good by implementing a new standardized session restore protocol. It's still early days, so it won't magically save the open tabs in your browser just yet, but it can now remember your window sizes, their positions, and which virtual desktop they were on. It's a tremendously huge step forward that promises a future where your desktop session comes back exactly as you left it. You can enable it by navigating to the desktop session section in your system settings and you can click on restore last session option. Here you will see the options to control how the session is handled. Since this protocol is extremely new, it's in its infancy, it works with few applications that can speak its language, so to say. You can try this out using modern KDE applications built with Qt6. You know like the Dolphin file manager, the text editor and the console terminal. Plasma has finally cleaned up the mess of scattered visual effect settings. Plasma 6.4 introduces a brand new animations page in system settings that gathers all your desktop movements and transition settings in one clean spot. So whether you want your desktop to glide like it's on ice or you don't really care about all the animations and effects and just want it to be nimble, it's now super easy to get that perfect feel that you always wanted. Alright, let's talk about the big one, Wayland. You can tell that the KDE developers are putting a ton of work in here because we got some big updates in this front. First up, screen mirroring is now way smarter. You know how it would sometimes get all stretched and distorted if you are mirroring to a screen with a different aspect ratio? Yeah, that's fixed. Controlling your mouse with the number pad now works perfectly in the Wayland session. It's great for accessibility. Plasma 6.4 also adds support for a bunch of new Wayland protocols. Things like single pixel buffer protocol that are all about making apps run more efficient and perform better. Wayland is maturing really fast on Plasma. 
With Plasma 6.4, Adaptive Sync or Variable Refresh Rate as it's also called is turned off by default. Now this is just to make sure everyone has a super stable experience from the get go since some graphics drivers can be a bit flaky with it. But if your hardware handles it well, you can just flip it right back on in the settings. It's all about making that first impression as rock solid as possible. I have always loved KD Plasma for its raw power and this 6.4 release just takes it to the next level. Three things particularly stood out for me. The per virtual desktop tiling is big. The session restore protocol that is being introduced here, that's going to be incredibly powerful. You start your computer and you jump into your work. This combined with the flexible tiling here, it's going to be a huge productivity boost for people. I also liked how the screenshot experience has been improved tremendously. It can be a little thing for many people, but I didn't think something as fundamental as taking screenshots can be improved to this extent. Overall, this iteration has humongous benefits that are going to facilitate productivity. Absolutely loved it. So how do you get this new release? The fastest way is KDE Neon, which always gets the latest Plasma first. If you're on a rolling release distro like Arch or OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, it'll land in your updates very soon. For those of us on fixed release systems like Stable Ubuntu or Fedora, you'll need to wait a bit longer for it to go through that testing. Alright, if you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning about Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 10 hottest Linux terminal apps that you should be using in 2025. It's got some really cool ones, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Tech's signing out.